I'm enchanted evening. You may see a stranger. You may see a stranger across a crowded room. And somehow you know, you know even then, that somewhere you'll see her again. So first of all, um, I'm just going to ask a little bit about South Pacific. You're in the middle of the return season. Um, how's it going the second time around? Actually, it's um, it's great. It's uh, it's lovely to come back to something you've done like a lot before because um, you sort of find yourself sitting into the role and the production a lot easier and find yourself doing things that, even though you haven't thought about it, just sort of happen afresh. So. That's, that's great to come back to. It definitely struck me as being a little more relaxed this time around than it was the last time around. And there was maybe, I don't know, the performers had a little bit more ease in their roles. Did, did it feel that way? Yeah, we had um, Bart Schur came back to put it on for the second time as well. So, And it's interesting when he comes back with another take at it. And, and he did still keep tinkering with it, which is really great and kind of wanted different things that approached at a different level. So it's really good that you keep working. And who, who someone was saying, I can't remember, someone said to me the other day, Stanislavski always said that, you know, a performer really, it takes 100 performances to get something really worked in. And that I guess that's actually why theatre is such a, a fabulous medium, because you do, you do get to think every thought and you do get to try it different ways with different audiences. So, yeah, it is. It's, not, it's been really lovely to come back. Teddy, obviously, your first musical theatre role. Mm. How's it been? Challenging? Rewarding? Oh, definitely challenging. And I've learned a lot. Um, it's kind of a, a cliche to say you've learned a lot, but it, no, I have. It's, um, I had to, had to find a way to uh, drop all my inhibitions about straight acting and and accents and all that sort of thing that I don't ever think about doing opera so um, yeah hopefully I've, I've uh, well I'm sure I have take I'll be able to draw on a lot of that to take back to the opera stage when I eventually get back to the opera stage next year put it this way he's learned enough to start um, getting gags in some lines that oh, you know, you go. never yeah. used to get laughed Teddy knows how to manipulate a laugh now yes, yeah, I've, worked, so yeah, <laughs> I've worked out the joy of you know Change in the inflection of a, of a sentence, and you can you get a get a laugh out of it. Yeah, the danger is, of course, you know, yeah, the, the danger is, of course, then you play for the gag. So, yeah, I've, got, I've got to get across that one now. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, another thing that's very different about musical theatre is it's eight shows a week. Yeah. Um, do you find that you have to kind of pace yourself a little bit, or? No, not at all. No, no. I think the, I, I think it's actually I find it quite a therapeutic. Way of life. Actually. I actually always thought before I met you and before we did, I thought, oh, he'll be off every second show. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, look, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, more stoic than any of us. I don't want to jinx myself. I absolutely don't want to jinx myself, but it's. Um, yeah, I don't. It's. Uh, I love going to work. Yeah, every night. It's great. With the King and I, it's you know your second go at a well, your third go at Rogers and Hammerstein actually, um, but seconds together and you know South Pacific was such a big success and connected with so many people. Do you feel that there's any pressure on to get it right with The King and I? I think that, um, I, I, particularly when um, Opera Australia started off in Sydney last year and they took that four week season, um, South Pacific could have run for eight if not 12 last year easily. It was just it was just taken to people's hearts and I think that that has a lot to do with Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, and I think King and I, you know, just quietly, in a, in a way like Sound of Music, because the demographic, because there's 15 children in the show, but the King's children, um, it's a show that grandparents can take their grandchildren. Um, South Pacific probably is a little older, you'd need to kind of take teenagers. My kids, one of them, my daughter's eight, and probably just a little bit beyond her, but King and I will be right up her alley. So it's, um, I, I kind of feel that it might even, it might just be the bit of magic for the year. When you look back over the script, I was reading on the plane the other day and there's just so many very beautiful human moments in it and, and, that, and I think that's what kind of um, is the bridge that crosses the two cultures and it's, you know, this, this woman who, this man, he doesn't disrespect women but there's certainly, you know, he is the king but then he meets a woman who, um, who kind of challenges him in a great way and doesn't become his equal in his mind but yet in some regard I, I think he does, 
he he shows her respect in the most endearing, beautiful ways. And we, the ending is oh, <laughs> beautiful. But we were in Brisbane the other day, and we had that we met some of the children for the first time. And just backstage, the kids were like um, the the excitement that they had and wanting to, you know, connect with us. Without they, they just there's this energy which they're going to bring to it, which we as adults can't bring in a way. It's mm. just we don't have that innocence of just exuberance, I guess, and they, I think that'll be the, um, I think that'll be the central focus in a way, is their story as well. Yeah, very much so. Mm. Um, and could you tell me a little bit about Anna? I mean, she's in some ways similar journey to what Nelly goes on, but in other ways quite a different character. Yeah, I mean, I think she um, she embraces the the culture whereas Nellie came from a place that just didn't want to know about that anything else existed really. So I mean that primarily is the, the great difference. I think um, Anna is, has been married and lost a husband. She's grieving. I think she's kind of almost shut down that side of her life. And she has a young son and she's looking for a way to, um, to live, I think. Um, and whereas Nellie is just starting out on that journey of falling in love and family and all of those things. Um, so, so that so that I, I find them to be quite different. And Teddy the King, obviously not going to be a vocal challenge. It's really a, a big acting role, isn't it? It's one, and he sings one song. I think one song and one line. Is that right? Yeah. Sings, yeah. yeah. Puzzlement. Puzzlement sings the song. It's a great which, song. Which great song, but doesn't really. It's almost not a singing song. Almost. Well, it hasn't been done that way before, but maybe you're going to do something with it because it, it's such a. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, change the, the change mission. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just <laughs> see how it goes. Oh, you know, I've got enough what things to worry about without the singing, so I'll just. Um, I've got a lot of lines to learn. Yes. So, so is that a little bit daunting? That you know, this really is a big acting role. Yeah. Look. Um, do you know though? Uh, we all say that acting. You know, it's not. It's not a difficult thing. It's a it's an exercise in truth and in storytelling, and difficult. that's kind of what you know. It's it's and, it's and Teddy's far, found really that now. <laughs> no, no, but you found that now, and, and it's you know you watch the great actors, and what they're good at doing is telling a story and in being truthful and finding ways of doing dialogue where it doesn't sound like dialogue. Mm. And I think that you've discovered that and already kind of stepped over that that hurdle. Post the King and I, even though it'll take up a lot of time probably mm. um do either of you have any dream musical theater roles um, you know my knowledge of musical theater is 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 not great i the the dream role i always wanted to play was curly in oklahoma <laughs> and i know that given my current look i've already missed the boat <laughs> on that it was always something i wanted to play as because as, i did it at school didn't, didn't play curly and i played Jed or someone, Judd, Jed. And so I don't think this is ever going to happen, unfortunately. So oh, you love Javert as well. You'd be an amazing Javert. Uh, he loves things that... Yeah, but... Um, oh, I could do that and uh, get older. Yeah, maybe yeah. there you go. Yeah. And Sleepstone? The Rogers and Hammerstein kind of library is pretty much... has been a dream run for me. Very much so. I've loved it. Oh, and I love Sondheim. But I feel, I feel as though I've done... I played Cinderella and I loved it and I got to play Anne in Little Night Music and so I think Eliza Doolittle was the only role that I feel I didn't touch and I would have liked to have because I, I think that I would have given it a good shot um, but that's I've moved on and beyond that now and so look I don't know I'll just kind of see what comes my way but I'm not I'm kind of not as um, there's not something that I hold up to be the role it was the Rogers and Hammerstone roles for me mm. I'm going to do a bit more opera, I think. <coughs> yeah. I'll just, uh, hopefully I'll do a bit more opera, yeah. I can do that into my into my later years in life. I reckon you would be great in um, Priscilla. Priscilla? <laughs> yeah, you would be a great drag queen. <laughs> great a very queen. tall drag queen. It's been, yeah. it's been said before. There you go. Oh, really? Oh, there you go. <laughs> getting to know you, getting to feel free and easy. When I am with Getting to know what to say Haven't you noticed Suddenly I'm bright and breezy Because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you day.